I want you to remember a feeling. A feeling when you were all snuggled up in your bed, it was warm, it was cozy, and you were ready. You were ready for your bedtime story. Can you recall the excitement when your mom or your dad or your grandparent would come and sit down next to you and they would start reading your favorite story? You heard that story so many times, but it was the most magical moment. The warmth of the room, the bed sheets, the gentle voice reading it. It was the best time and the best way to fall asleep. No doubt, stories are very warm to us, but why? Well, through history, stories became a central element of human communication and connection. We engage with each other through stories. We can share important messages, and they can come across through different cultures and generations. For example, a story of Little Mermaid. It is embedded in a Danish culture, but it's also accepted globally. The moral of the story is cross-cultural and cross-generational. It is pursuit of true love and sacrifice. And why important it is to not to listen to your parents, I mean, that's very cross-generational, right? And with stories, we learn things. It is, with no doubt, the best way how to understand things. For example, let's take a group, all of you guys here. 40% of you are predominantly visual learners. You like to learn with images and videos and diagrams. Other 40% of you are auditory learners. You like to learn through discussions and lectures. And 20% of you are practical learners. You like to get your hands dirty and you like to feel and experience. And storytelling has aspects of all of that, whether you're auditory learner, practical, or visual. And we are automatically drawn to stories because we see ourselves in them. And no, this is not an ego problem. I mean, it is just your simple reflection of yourself in a story. So today, you will be able to reflect yourself in a story that I will tell to you. You will be able to pick. Do you want to be a princess? Do you want to be a dragon? A knight? Or something more modern? I'm sorry, it might not be the Disney quality of a story, but I assure you, the princess will be saved in the end, and you will not have to kiss a frog. The main character of this story is going to be you. But not you now. You, when you were nine years old. And this little robot, we will call it, we will call it Ted. The two of you are going on an adventure of missing socks. The objective of this story is for you to understand how storytelling and robots work together and why this story might be a great hit like The Little Mermaid. So, just relax and listen. Once upon a time, and not that long time ago, some very clever people developed educational technology. And a normal human reaction is that we got curious about it, and we started exploring the benefits of it. Your parents, realizing how cool it is, they decided to buy this for Christmas for you. Awesome. You start to play with it immediately. What will happen is that you will have improvement in your cognitive skills. To be less technical, those skills are problem-solving thinking, um, logic, critical thinking, or to be even more simple, those skills you need to use when you lose your socks. You have to think, when was the last time I saw them? When did I wear them? Did the washing machine eat them again? You get my point. But if you keep continue playing with this robot, you will progress and your critical thinking will improve. So now you have a higher chance to find your socks. 
But now, if we add storytelling as a learning tool and a medium between you and this robot, for example, algorithms, they become a fun list of tasks that you need to do. One, find your socks. Two, put your socks on. Three, put your shoes on, not the other way around. So essentially, you will increase your tech understanding. So that means that if you play with the robot, the coding robot that combines storytelling as a learning tool, not only that you will find your socks and have a good time, but you will be able to find that one sock that has been missing for weeks. That's a great story, right? <laughs> Besides what I just mentioned, you having a great time and finding all those missing socks and all of that, something else happened. You have developed a certain relationship with this robot, a certain sense of care, of friendship. Now, if we can develop a relationship with the robot that is using storytelling as a learning tool, what will happen if there is a robot sitting down next to you and is telling you a story? Can you remember what I was mentioning in the beginning? The feelings that you were feeling, the warmth, the connection, the sense of importance. Do you think that if a robot like this is sitting down next to you and is telling you a story, can you develop the same feelings? Can a robot replace your grandma? I'm, I mean, I know it's a silly question, <laughs> but let's, let's look at this from a practical point. Parents who value, value storytelling, they have three goals. First, they want to teach their kids vocabulary skills. Second, they want to create a habit, a healthy habit, like signaling their, bed, uh, their children that it's time for bed. And third, they want to create that bond, the connection between themselves and their child. If we talk about the first point, there is something out there called social robots. These robots are designed to provide a personalized one-on-one -on -one time with young readers. So these kids are learning linguistic skills with robots that is essentially learning their ways. So that means that your child, when your child is playing with this robot, this robot is learning how they progress, how they engage with it, how they improve. So you as a parent know that your child is getting the best learning time possible. And then you don't need to pretend that you're a linguistic teacher after 6 p.m. and the whole day of work. The robot is doing that for you. So if we adopt this technology and make it accessible for everyone, not only in homes, but in schools, can you imagine an impact this would have in, let's say, less privileged neighborhoods, where children can have this one-on-one -on -one interaction and have this best time to learn? Luckily, projects like this already exist, and we're seeing the improvement children, children are making. So social robots like that are, are holding a great promise for both teachers and parents, because not only they're helping the children improve linguistic skills, they're interacting with kids in social and both physical and emotional way. The second goal of storytelling is to create a healthy habit. And we all know life, deadlines, obligations, sometimes it's just tough. But we need to create that consistency for your children because it's important. And maybe you don't always have the grandma service that will come in and save the day. You just need to get a bit creative. So can you imagine having a superhero storyteller robot that would tell your child a story while you're dealing with your obligations? It doesn't even have to be a robot. It can be a simple tablet or in a reading app. Of course, I'm not suggesting that you should sit your child down in front of a tablet for six hours, but I mean, we can be creative, and if we're intentional, 
we can gain from it. And you know that one story that your child just loves, loves? You know it, right? They wanted to hear it yesterday, day before, today, twice. Like it wasn't enough, they need to hear that pee-pee long stocking can lift a horse. No, 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 let's do it one more time. So solutions like this can help you stay consistent, save the day, and save a bit of your nerve stew in situations like this. And the last goal of storytelling is to create that bond, that connection. So the question clearly stays, can we do that with technology? Can we do that with something like this? Obviously, we cannot compare ourselves with our children. We were introduced to a technology like this, more or less, when we were adults, but our children are exposed to it since the day they were born. So their relationship will be different. So will they, will they be able to create this relationship? Will, is it something we will call a human tech relationship? I'm sorry. I will have to disappoint you here and I will not give you the answers. I mean, this is not that kind of TED talk. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but I am here to give you my perspective on things. In my, during my entrepreneurship journey as a non-technical founder, I came to realize how important technology actually is. And not just how to use it, but to actually understand it and to understand it from an early age. And essentially, that's why I am co-creating a technology that will help children understand it through storytelling. And essentially, they will create this bond with robots. But I cannot emphasize on the balance that we need to create. Above everything in this world, I value human connection, something that I'm having right now with all of you here. The human connection is the source of the most joyful moments I had in life and the source of most miserable ones, but it is a specter of colors that is my life and it's making me feel alive. And I will above and above and above everything prioritize human connection, but there are tools out there that can help us come in and save the day. Technology is here to help us. It is the new set of colors, you can say it, that is coloring our life, but we need to learn how to cherish it and properly use. So I'm inviting all of you here today to take the same care, the same love, the same approach that you have with your friends, with your loved ones, with your children, take the same approach with technology. Because let's be honest, you don't carry your friends in your pocket. Your phone is in your pocket with you most of the day. So you have to be intentional and aware because this can always be replaced. But let's make sure that this doesn't replace me or you. Thank you.